I do think that this kind of goes back to the worldviews that you hold. Would you say that if you're dating, you're dating for marriage? Me? Yes. Huh. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not going to get married. Really? No. Why? He's one of those people that thinks it's a legal institute is my initial guess. Oh, it's not that I think it's a legal institution. <laughs> it is, in fact, a... Wait, what was that? Huh? It's, it's, it's a religious thing. Do, oh, yes, like of my course. My daughter's dad was like that. It's like that. So oh, I get it. Of course. Look, I don't object. Here's the thing. I'm not like... Uh, I don't object to marriage from a religious perspective. But there are certain legal realities. Uh, the government, like, okay. You don't want the government making money <laughs> off your marriage. Well, okay. So you get legally married. And again, you have to, some states, there's a common law marriage where even if you don't, like if you've cohabitated or you've conducted yourselves as if you are married, then you can find yourself in a common law marriage. In fact, in Canada, you might be familiar with this story. There was a man who was just dating a woman, boyfriend and girlfriend. I think they might have cohabitated, lived together, maybe. You have to cohabitate for a period of time. But my understanding, and this was a wealthy guy, I don't even know if they were cohabitating, but she sued him. They were married, boyfriend, girlfriend. She sued him for spousal support. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. What's that? In Canada, boyfriend, a girlfriend suing her ex-boyfriend for uh, like alimony, alimony or something. Yeah, it's oh. essentially that they have to provide you the, you can same, find the, article, the same lifestyle that's monetarily that you had while you were with them. He how long so were they together? So I have a question when it comes to the whole al alimony thing. If a man is expected to continue providing financially because you're used to a certain lifestyle, do, does that then mean that as a man you've, you're used to having pussy? So do, does, is a woman, should the woman be like legally compelled to continue like giving you pussy if... You know, I completely agree with that. Train this is such of a ridiculous. No, I know that that's a weird example, but Pussy the point that you're making over. is extremely valid. I mean, but there, like, I'm I was used to having sex every having night pussy. when I came home from work, and now you're not. You want a divorce? So if you're gonna you. get my money, I still get laid, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm being obviously, I, there's no scenario where the government can compel somebody, man or woman, to have sex with somebody else. But it is interesting that. There is this financial expectation, but also, anyways. I do, uh, I do think on that note, and it's something that's incredibly common uh, in Canada. It varies by province, but um, I know where I live, it's. A, I think you have to be living together for one year. One Minimum. year. Minimum. It's it? only one year. That's yeah. Nick, do you have the article? Um, I wouldn't live with anybody in Canada. It's different per state too. But, like um, states have different <laughs> laws of what, about what they. The one thing I would say is I, I've, I'm here for it only if there's children involved. I think if you have a situation where there's well, children then involved, then there's child support. You know, and mothers typically right. get f full custody on average. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that Disavow. makes sense. 50-50. I be personally 50 /50. Yeah, feel like it changed Wait. in the states anyways. Okay. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit, make it a little bigger? Oh, Ontario. Unmarried Ont Ontario couple had no children, no house, but man must still pay support. Um, can you scroll down? <gasps> wait, wait, actually scroll back up. Being in Ontario, being common law Ontario. spouses doesn't necessarily mean having lived. I don't even think they were living together. Yeah, that's odd then. Uh, a wealthy businessman will have to pay more than $50,000 a month in spousal support for 10 years to a woman with whom he had a long-term romantic relationship, even though they kept separate homes and had no children together. That is fucking brained. What? I mean, honestly. What? That's a little, that's really absurd. That's but like extreme, right? Yeah, like, like I've never heard of something like that. That's the province next to where I live. Um, and we don't have those laws where, where I live at least, but that's a really extreme situation for sure. That's that's uncommon. That's, I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me, but I saw that story out of Canada. So um, really quick, just on the marriage thing. Uh, look, so a woman reserves the right at any given time even if she's like super religious and prays daily to just like all of a sudden she can just become a raging feminist decide that she's kind of bored in the marriage and end the marriage 
and then she's going to go she's not going to go to god she's not going to go to the priest she's not going to go to her church she's going to go to an attorney a lawyer who may very well be an atheist who may very well not be religious or godly or any of these things the attorney she's going to defer to the attorney's recommendation who has a financial motive and incentive to siphon as much money from the husband as possible. The husband probably has to pay for the attorney and he's gonna have to pay for his own attorney too. And then they're embroiled, especially if the divorce is contentious, there's disagreements about things. It's gonna be embroiled in a contentious divorce. He's gonna spend thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even six figures of, in legal costs, depending on how wealthy he is. And then uh, there's gonna be alimony and um, community property distributions and uh, so even, even if she's a good woman, she's, not good, she's naive. She doesn't know how to, first off, whether you're a man or a woman, most people don't know how to navigate the civil court system. It's incredibly complex. You can't do a, a self-help divorce. Prenup? You're gonna go to an attorney, boom. Okay, cool, your attorney wants money. Cool, they're, they're in the business of making money, right? Okay. Prenup. So this Boom. is also where cool. I don't believe in no cause divorce, and this is a yeah, concept that like Michael Knowles talks on because women uh, initiate seventy eight percent of divorces, mm-hmm. some number like that, and mm-hmm. I don't think that any woman that initiates a no cause divorce should be able to come after a man for alimony. I agree. If the situation was reversed, I would be paying alimony to my daughter's dad and child support, even though I have her ninety percent of the time just because of work schedules, not because of a custody arrangement. But you know what though like let me give a counter to that i'm actually i i actually have objections to rolling back no fault divorce and here's why because i do think there's a risk to men where women will just lie they'll just lie and say that there was abuse in order to try to get out of a marriage so i'm actually look if i'm actually in favor of no fault divorce because i think men face an increased risk of false accusations false accusations of abuse, child abuse, a man could go to jail. So I'm hesitant to roll back. Uh, it's, just, it's giving it a space. Well, I'm mean. just like curious. Space, I'm, like not saying, I'm not so saying all women. Lie. Yeah, look, don't, I'm not saying all women would resort to lying to get out of a marriage, but I'm saying there are there's some that would. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm actually in favor of just, look, you want out of a marriage, just go. Well, just go. The one because if you if you're motivated enough, you're gonna lie and ruin a man's life. So I mean, then, look at so all the women. So then, don't ask with, for alimony. Well, yeah, no, I was gonna say the one uh, caveat to that is that you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's either you don't want a woman to be able to press you for alimony in court, or you don't want, or, or you want no cause divorce, right? Because otherwise, if they're, I mean, they can't exist mutually exclusively. Well, I would argue that, for example, like if the guy can prove, I'm, I'm. A man having to pay alimony versus, like a group of men having to pay alimony versus the potential for some men to be falsely accused because of uh, if there were, uh, you had to have fault to get a divorce. Uh, I would rather men be paying alimony than some men being falsely accused of things that can land them in prison or jail um, and ruin their life. But uh, I think perhaps, for example, if if, for example, you can like demonstrably prove there's infidelity, for example, I think that should be legislated. If you can prove that your spouse, and she tries to divorce, if there's divorce, right, that she cheated on you, there's infidelity, then that should relinquish your responsibility for, um, for uh, a- a spousal support, alimony, and for any sort of, she doesn't get any community property. I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, well, um, we have that in Canada for a certain period of time. I have it, a friend actually who just went through something similar. So, I mean, if if women initiate 78% of divorces, then wouldn't you, it would likely be the exception, not the rule, when women were falsifying evidence in order to collect alimony if no cause divorce was implemented, right? Wait, so I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. So if, if no cause divorce is implemented and women initiate 78% of divorces, then men are still protected largely from paying alimony because they, the woman would still have to falsify information. And yes, the legal system would inevitably fail at times. It fails all the time across the board on several different topics. But I think that men would be more protected 
if no cause divorce was implemented and women continued trying to or initiating mm -hmm. the majority of divorces. I'm not totally following. So you're saying we get rid of no fault divorce? No, no, you implement it. Well, so wait, hold no, on. so we you have, no, no. We have no fault divorce. Sorry, sorry. Um, that's what I'm saying. Abolish get, it. Yeah. Get rid of no fault divorce. Correct. So that women have to prove some sort of cause, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if women initiate a majority of divorces, yeah. I don't. I'm not convinced that all 78 percent would attempt to falsify information. Oh, of course. I don't think they would. So all I'm saying is that you would be protecting some percentage of men in that scenario, yeah, but, correct? So my argument is, even if it's even if it's say one percent of women would, and it may very well be higher, but if one percent of women would make up false accusations of uh, abuse, I think that it's better to keep uh, the current no-fault divorce system. If if some men have to pay alimony to protect a smaller percentage of men so from false accusations, I'm in favor of that. Are you suggesting that women currently do not falsify evidence against men even oh, though... Oh, they still do. Right. So that's, even, that's even, all that I'm e saying yes, is that if that still currently happens, then regardless, they a do percentage the, they of do men is still protected They'll by do it doing all that. the time in custody disputes. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. No Let argument. me accuse my husband of abuse. That way I can... I have a better chance of getting the children. It happens all the time. But I'm speaking more so just from like the uh, financial perspective of, uh, you know, the alimony and, uh, yeah. I just think that if that is abolished, then there is more potential legal risk to fall back on the woman and it would um, deter them from falsifying evidence in order to get a divorce. I just well, I still I feel I think yeah. it would save some percentage of men. I just ultimately, when it comes to, to marriage, the whole thing, look, um, the state, the state oversees the marriage. So a woman's gonna uh, go if she wants a divorce. She's gonna go to the state, and then you have the state involved. So I'm not. I have a question. Yeah. Um, if you were to be with someone who really valued marriage um, for religious purposes, uh -huh. but you didn't want the state to be involved, would you be open to having some sort of a ceremony that's unofficial just for the principle of what exactly it is that means? Well, I would have to do legal research on if if you do just get married, like have a religious ceremony, but that doesn't have any sort of uh, l any sort of legal ramifications because I'm sure there's there could uh, I'd have to research that more but if if it's the case for example that you can do a religious ceremony you can get married you can consider yourselves husband and wife but there's no uh, you get if you get a divorce there's no uh, alimony or whatever then then I, you know there wouldn't be any sort of drawn out court case anything like that then I'd be more open to it Okay. I'd, I'd be, yeah, I'd be. I think lots of people. I, I'd actually, yeah, I'd be totally fine with that. People have parties all the time. I don't object married. to it from a religious perspective, but I'm not. I mean, I, I can't imagine unless sh she's rich. <laughs> which <laughs> well, kind that's of what I was going to challenge you. Them. There is that what I'm hearing you say then is that your assets take precedence above your relationship. Yeah. My assets take precedence over my relationship. Or desire to get married, rather? Do you have no faith in humanity that you might find a woman who you I think actually it's just feel being, wouldn't divorce you? It's just you? being pragmatic, given the fact that, as you mentioned, it's about 80% of women initiate divorces. Uh, it's just not worth the risk. But also, you know, you say that, but, you know, why are you looking at that statistic and thinking that that would be me? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, that could be a high statistic, but that's not, that's not me. That's not my future wife. That's not our relationship. And like, as you get older, the percentage of, of divorces like drops off. Well, yeah. I think I'm... <laughs> and, like, why do you want to fall into a statistic? Wouldn't I mean, you maybe want to this go comes above off that? as uh, not being secure in myself. Mm. But... Now we're getting somewhere. No, look. <laughs> Tell us your childhood trauma. I feel, look, I think I'm a good person, but I don't, I almost have this premonition. I don't know if I say it. I don't say know. It, say it. it. I feel like I'm the dude that gets divorced. Damn. 
I just, oh. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm that dude. Are you seeing so, someone about that? Huh? <laughs> I said, are you seeing someone about that? <laughs> just giving you I just are your parents together? Feel, Do you need a Are hug? your parents together? They are together. Good. That's wonderful. They are together and they have a, they're married and they have a great relationship. That's and beautiful. Why do you feel that way? Huh? Why, Why do, do you, you feel? feel that way? Because I feel like I'm not, hmm. hmm. I, I, I'm not like that hyper masculine dude. Like yeah. I'm kind of more uh, laid back. <laughs> I don't. What's that, Nick? Sassy. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> sassy. <laughs> like I don't. So I don't know. Can't be like a lumberjack or something. I'm know? a gamer. <laughs> I've got gamer hands. Game yeah. dudes with gamer hands get divorced. That is Damn. true. They do look nicely moisturized. I did see a statistic about that somewhere. His nails are long. But the thing is, is like no but like, I, I don't. And what maybe the chat can weigh in on this. Gaming princess who like loves what you do. Well, like, Discord yeah. kittens. I crushed like 400 <laughs> no, but hours I, of I Animal Crossing. I feel like crossing. look. I'm not like. I, I feel like at least I'm self-aware. I'm not this like. Oh, super like rough like uh how do i explain it like super hyper masculine guy and i feel like that but you hold very masculine yeah. beliefs that's what i was gonna say like it doesn't it's just because of your you know you know your I extracurricular like activities i'm a little don't feminine in, sometimes but I'm i feel feminine. like with your views and and attitude and even just the way that you present yourself you're you're already not attracting the type of women that you slightly when feminine it comes to that somebody in the chat says <laughs> i feel like it's valid though because i do think that people that roast him no no no, no okay. that want to get married should only be 150 percent mm -hmm. yeah I, would well, agree. I agree but i don't think he's also found maybe the right person right that so, was gonna be yeah, my yeah. other train of thought is yeah, that like i don't like, know if you'll you know really when you experience. know you really do you really do I just know when you know and so i don't think i don't like want to front dismiss. of god everybody the state let's do this yeah and I, I just don't want to dismiss what, what you said because the i mean 78 percent that's a big yeah, percentage absolutely. and i think that it's very reasonable especially for men in a higher income bracket to want to protect those assets i just think that if you value marriage that one or the other has to take priority at the end he's of the day he's a brave and a decent man he's a pioneer oh thank <laughs> thank you thank you i'm touched that's why i asked you you know like i understand it from a legal perspective i'm kind of on a similar boat actually where i don't really want that um but i do know that i value what it means to be married and if there's a way that i can do that without having quote unquote the state involved i would i would absolutely opt for that over it because to me it's not it's not my signature on a piece of paper that means something when it comes to getting married okay. it's it's everything else that encompasses I'm that. curious what even the reasons are when that when w for women who pursue divorce filing through no-fault divorce like what are their reasons for getting divorced I just didn't they're bored. Money, money, well, yeah, I think money. that we've devalued marriage as a mm -hmm. society. I think that yeah, feminism has said that if if men and women can be the same, then I don't need you and you don't need me. And I when I get bored or when life changes, then it, it's more convenient for me to prioritize myself. The problem is, is that when there's no foundation of morals, we all become our own god. That's and what I, yeah, no, earlier. It's like it gets lonely up there. And right. So is it just based off of boredom and? fell out of love i also think uh, largely most I people don't want to so. put in any work either it's an inconvenience or, yeah it but could again, be that there is a fault they just don't want to go to that extent because something could be used against or them. they got married on birth control. i just look and also <laughs> i i don't think it's entirely me i think there's there's other factors too as to why i'm very hesitant hesitant to get married first off uh i'm doing i'm doing pretty well i'm successful so there's a pretty significant financial risk there. And then additionally, uh, it, just the current social climate, one, there's no social stigma for people to get divorced. So people are there much more be. willing, I agree, there, it no, should no. be. Mm -hmm. uh, people are just, there's no more, sh the, being divorced used to be shamed. Mm -hmm. There used to be pressure from your friends and family. Now, if you, if you go to your girlfriends and say, man, I'm just not really, I'm not, uh, I kind of want to get divorced. Your girlfriends are going to be like, throwing you a divorce. Yeah, girl. fucking do it. We've hated him forever. Oh, thank God. Well, yeah. it's so, a trend now. It's, it's gross. It's, it's disgusting. Right. And so I have really no faith in the system. So I know a lot of people in the chat are like, oh, Brian, you're self deprecating, blah, blah, blah. And look, I think one component, I do have like to some degree, I feel like, uh, 
I, there's like certain, I'm not perfect, right? I've got some character okay. defects and shit, but uh, look at these fucking gamer hands, bro. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Why do you hate do your gamer hands? It's like the third time. I just time. feel like I don't have you marriageable, have purpose in life. I don't have what marriageable you don't hands. About? You don't want like the moment when the ring goes on and you I was like, look. I just don't have marriageable hands, I feel like. Like uh, in order to marry a man, he has to have like big, fat, <laughs> meaty man hands. And look at these That's fucking hands, true. dude. I should play piano, bro. I should have been a fucking virtuoso Penis. piano player. But alas, here I am doing a fucking dating podcast, boys. Um, look, also, I've heard some horror stories from uh, so many of my viewers. Some of you might be watching right now. Some of you maybe DM'd me. And look, this is just, I've, I, you read stories online. These men get demolished, destroyed in, in the court system, in marriage. It's just, I see, I've, I'm a businessman. You know I'm a businessman because you find me at my place as a business. <laughs> it's a bad, I don't sign contracts. The, the marriage contract is like the most, <clears throat> oh, it's, dude, it's so bad. It's so, I'm not even a fucking attorney. The marriage contract is so fucking bad. In your opinion. Let me ask a question. If I want to date a girl and have a monogamous long-term relationship with her what do i get in marriage that i don't get from just having a long-term life relationship with her nothing it should be sex absolutely yeah. nothing yeah it should through be sickness sex. and it in health sex. that's or right ladies you want, you want to get married meals hey wait a the second peanut butter they cream pie let's throw oh. this one at you okay so what if yeah and i understand that you are far from a virgin but what oh, if he never oh, disclosed oh. his body count he could be a virgin we're not stupid here <laughs> so what if you were to meet a woman mm -hmm. let's say five years from now you're still single still kicking yourself for it you meet this girl she is everything she's a virgin she refuses to have sex with you until marriage would you hypothetically in that situation potentially sign the dotted line after being together for so long because she was the one I think, or would you say, I mean, absolutely you say not, earlier, let's like, go on Tinder and find me. a new one? <laughs> She's a virgin? A complete hypothetical, but She's yes. She's a virgin. <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten, uh, the, th the problem is, is the cat's out of the bag a bit on this. Like, she look, doesn't have like, internet. She's from like, a Mennonite I colony. I like sex. Okay, Best I like sex. You've ever seen. Uh, big, oh, largest confirmed Trump largest labia. Slave. Yeah, she All has right. a huge That's labia. All right. Oh. Where's the fucking? Where's the fucking? Where's the uh, she's virgin. Ten out of ten. <laughs> large labia. Sign me up. Shit. <laughs> okay. Is she short too? Sure. All right. Oh yeah. Sign. Don't you like your girls like sign, four foot? Sign me up. I think I heard you like your girls like, like four I foot. Like sh four I do prefer shorter women. Yes. <sighs> Look, I'll date a girl who's taller than me. I'll date a girl who's six five. Fuck it. It's interesting because I've like you? had the total opposite uh, experience just with um, the institute thing. I was just I was uh, raised by a guy, my dad, and because yeah. my mom passed away when I was thirteen, and yeah. so I ended up in a situation where I was gonna potentially be paying child support. Got lucky mm -hmm. there. Could have been paying alimony because of common law marriages in Colorado. Uh, when I married my husband, I paid off all of his debt from my savings account, and then uh -huh. we just paid it back there. So it's just funny how. Mm. It's it's a one way street is what it feels like sometimes, but I also see that that can come from this mm. feminist movement and how women just aren't on the right seat on the bus anymore too. Good times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the scenario. She's a virgin and she's ten out of ten. Yeah. Huge labia. Okay. Oh, virgin. Okay. massive. Massive. And never, massive. never, has, seen, she claps never when she has used, never has seen a computer because she's. <laughs> <laughs> and she, yeah, she's, an so she has nothing. She's she Pentecostal. Doesn't know anything about you at all. Just thinks you're the best human being in the world. And you're so big to her because she's so tiny. I mean, <laughs> this is a this is like a very rare woman you're describing. I'd rather like talk in actualities versus pot like uh okay but we've already decided that there is no actuality here your answer would be no which is why we have to talk in hypotheticals mm -hmm. just so I can see just so we can break you yeah we want to break <laughs> you. How tall is Brian Atlas compared to oh six foot one? Six foot one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Okay. Maybe. He's looking for a men and night spin. Like, I, I can I can I see the future and know she wouldn't divorce me? No. <gasps> she's, never been, oh, she's never been outside of her. She's never been outside of her. But she just wouldn't. Plan. Like, come on. Because that's not your relationship. You have to have better hope that's the for thing. your you have to relationship. Pick better. You have to pick better. The woman you're gonna be with, like, you should know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Let me ask you a question. 
Do you think, like, like most people, when they get married, mm -hmm. they sign the contract, do you think they're thinking at that moment, yeah, we're probably going to get divorced? I think like, that's no. common. Honestly, no, I, think, no. I think, I do. I yeah. honestly no. think that there's so many most people, people who that get are married, like, it's going to get better think. once we're married. Yeah, that's, that, I, that runs through the, it'll be better once we're married. And it, once you're saying that to yourself, you probably shouldn't be getting married. Let's also factor in though too, when women especially, you know, we go through our younger age and I guess it depends, depend, or it varies depending on where you live, but when you're younger, you're maybe not thinking so much about that. However, you'll hit an age, let's say 28, 29, somewhere around there and suddenly one of your friends gets engaged and then the next one does and then everyone does and it happens that way with children as well and it's just this effect where it's like, well, I don't wanna, we're human beings. We totally have pack mentality. You don't wanna be the only one who's not in love enough to get married. And so then you start kind of, hey, honey, oh, I'm I'm your dress. Wolf. psychology, I'm you know, and Fear and then, yeah, you maybe yes. do end up getting married and saying yes, because, yeah, sure, you love someone. Are they your forever? You might know in your gut that they're not, I but don't know. I do think that that is, I'd love to see stats on it. I wish I had some on me, but I, I would, I would think that that would be more common. Look, than if we would she's, think. it's possible, maybe <laughs> I would get married. I think that if when she, you meet maybe the right I would get know. married if she was a virgin and you know 10 out of 10 I'm sorry. but like it's, why is she why true. but yeah. then it's like <laughs> why is the 10 out of 10 <laughs> <Okay>. virgin <laughs> Why'd she want me? Life will See, go there on. Zero there one lies the human. issue. <laughs> no, that's not the issue. It's just like maybe maybe you're awesome. Yeah, maybe she met you. And maybe she you need you're to awesome. love yourself. I'm an average white guy. Maybe she loves average white Who guys. Who does above average things. That are you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I excel in other realms, but. So. Like, you know. Was that a video game reference? No. I excel in other realms? No, it's just like, <laughs> you know. You know, I've got some good things going for me, but, uh, you know, I'm an average looking white guy. Mm -hmm. I can't be like. <laughs> Oh, I want like a 10 out she of 10 She doesn't have a TV, virgin. so she's never seen like... That's some people's type, though. Yeah. And also, almost every like girl on the planet is a 10 out of 10 in their eyes these days. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and okay. you're what? You're what? Oh, huh? 34? Yeah, I'm 34. Oh, okay. How many 10 out of 10 virgins? Like, what? what Probably is? none. Probably none. It's not really, yeah, it's rare. Go to the religious places. You'll find one. Mm. Eh. Mm. What if she still, doesn't have an Audi though, and can, I'm just married? And I have I'm an lost, Audi. And then you I'm can gonna, still be oh, religious. <laughs> good for not you. Not religious. <laughs> like and then I'm just like, no. no, I'm kidding. Okay, okay. All right, let's. Audi I'm gonna try to wrap up here very soon. <laughs>